counseling has been rescheduled for Thursday afternoon. We apologize for the inconvenience. Well, that's okay. <clears throat> good evening, good evening, good evening. Welcome back to Division. Now, I know I'm a bit late in this. It's been out for months. I've had it for long, uh, long enough. Remember that, um, but I realised I haven't shown anybody underground or explained underground. So, starting a base of operations. Go down the back door. Out through here. In snowball fights near checkpoints as they the this area is called the hub. Survival, which I've shown you previously over here. There is other facilities as we go past. Underground is here. We go down here. Through the ID check area. He never checks my ID. And away we go. This takes us down into the bowels underneath the base of operations and into the New York subway system. Underground is based on uh, procurally generated missions, uh, based on a basic building block type of build, where they have sections of environment which get generated as they go. Once you create mission, when you first enter, got a uh, vendor there that sells caches for Phoenix credits. And you've got a stash facility here, but the most important bit is the underground operations matchmake or configure. So we interact with like that. Now we can join somebody's existing mission there. Uh, or we can start a fresh one ourselves. Creating an operation sometimes costs in directive intel which you uh, pick up as you go along in uh, open world and what have you so let's start our operation we can choose a difficulty level and phases means how long it goes now each phase is actually quite long anyway and when you start off uh, you're only be allowed to one phase operation so i'm going to show you a one phase operation and basically it'll be that if you do a vert sue phase it'll be the same length again Three phase, same it again. So, a oh, single phase operation. And we go through directives, which are difficulty caps that you can add. And this is where your directive intel comes in. So, fog aware, fog of war, you can add into the game, which means your minimap's disabled. The directional threat indicators on your minimap, where you have the little red marks showing you roughly where the enemy are, it's gone. Also, when you uh, pulse, it won't show you where the enemies are, they won't light up. And target indicator will only be available if you're actually pointing your weapon at an enemy. Mad skills. Using a skill resets the cooldown on the other equipped skill. So if you use your normal skill, then you've got both skills down simultaneously and they're all on cooldown at the same time. Waste not, want not. Potentially one of the worst ones, or hardest ones. Any rounds left in the magazine, if you reload before it's expired, are all lost. And your starting ammo count is reduced. So say you have a thousand rounds of your ammunition for one particular type of weapon. That is probably halved, so you only have five, six hundred. Okay, and that goes for all the weapons you hold. Special forces, the enemy rounds have special ammunition types. Um, that depends on the, so the enemy faction. So, for example, you're facing cleaners. Uh, they'll have flame one, uh, we uh, ammunition that sets you on fire, for example. Now, you don't know who you're facing when you set a, set off on a mission. It's all completely randomly generated, as I said before. Uh, sickness is the last one. As you're going through the mission, your health drains all the time. You can heal it back. You have all your skills. But you're on a timer, really. And if you don't complete your task, um, and you or, or can't withdraw, uh, bump up your health, you die, and you set back to the beginning. Now, obviously, the other issue here we have is if you fail in an operation, i.e., die during a mission, you're sent right back to this hub. You are not restarting during a mission. Kicked out. Done. That's it. So we haven't added any directives. 
Let's go through the mission. Show you. There's a mission board here. Confirms what we've got on there. This hasn't cost me any directive points because I didn't put any directives in it. It also shows you what your rewards are. XP. If you add directives, it also adds extra caches that you can collect, extra weapons, extra gear you can collect, and such like. So, let me go through this little tunnel here. Off to the waiting underground carriage and launch our operation. Um, in other news, we've got uh, Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Wildlands open beta coming this weekend. Uh, I hope to get some footage for you, well, I'm sure I will get some footage for you, and I hope it's going Those to be Those coordinates I'm sending you, that's why some unfriendlies are holding some intel that I need. You want to go get it? Right, so we need to go and get some intel. Let's do stop our mission before going in. Yep, so Wildlands this weekend, and we'll try and catch some footage in co-op play with uh, one of my friends. And, uh, because I think it's going to generally be, definitely, a game that you play as a cooperative value. Now I can see enemies here. I'm going to pulse on my skills. Oh, I need to go up on that first level there. So I've got a grenadier. Right. So what I need to do is take out Warning. him first. Hostile detected. GPS data I was on about. That's what I needed. Objective data has been updated. Okay. So I'll have to investigate the area. Now as you see you've got several levels you can get up to. There will be caches and various things up in these areas. Uh, if you've got the fog of war up, none of that shows up on your mini map, so you have to physically look for everything. Where to go. One of the things about underground is that it is very easy to get lost. The GPS doesn't always show you a good route to places. It sometimes gets confusing, so don't run so quickly. Warning. Hostiles detected. Let's get over here, I think. Come here, come here. Take this! Like a lamb to the slaughter. They stand up a lot of the time. Where's the sniper? The advantages of snipers is they're squishy. Oh, it's for you. Oh, can't see, can't see, can't see. And can see again. Just one. I know we're to the other side because we've got my mini map. 
visibility reduced. Now leaving impacted area. Those switches clear the air, uh, visibility is improved. Got more GPS data here. Your objective has been updated. And it fits all the future. There we go. Expect. Uh, underground missions are pretty hard. So it's Uh, detected. Another little thing here, it's called, uh, well I call it a thumper. See that robot -y thing showing up there on there? That, when I'm within that range, I won't be able to use any skills. It jams skills. So it's ping now. how slowly the GPS spawns up. If, you, if you're in a group, you're running the entire way, you get to a point where you catch up and go via the GPS. Very easy to get completely lost and have to double back and find your way back to where you should be going. Animation crate, we'll take, we are not low, but we'll take the opportunity anyway. Always good practice to reload when you can. Also, more collectibles in the underground. So, looks like the gator came back. Not uh. There we go. Not going to spoil it for you guys going around. All have stories. Also collectible items. There are um, photos and stuff like that. And they all add to your XP. Give you a bit more story. People complain the story's really short. How about reading, listening? To the stuff that the story gives you. People forget that there's loads more story in the story. It's just not spoon fed to you. You don't bother to. The majority of people don't bother to listen to the recordings, they're too busy. Yeah. The electric off. Spark myself to death. Oh, I can't get that way anyway. That's fine. Anyway, down here. Oh, 
Oh, the cleaners are fighting uh, Rikers. Happens. Remember, if this looks hard, this is only hard. It's not challenging. I've chosen hard because I wanted to go through it. I wanted to complete it and go for you, show you guys the the expansion. You just made my day, Agent. Talk to him as well. Plenty of time to talk intel after we drop these unfriendlies. What front friendly? Apparently there are Morning. friendlies around. Incoming hostiles. Well, oh, no, right behind there, that's interesting. Dropped. Yay, good stuff. Some more GPS data. 
which the officer decided what to die. What you back from the underground? That's definitely something I can get oh, yeah. actual data out of. So thanks. That is finished. But it's not over. Every time you rank up, you get an underground cache. There you go. Now we need to go downstairs. Exit. Go to the evac point. Let's search the grenade, are we? No? Okay. So once completed the mission. Come to the end of mission, exit operation, don't go there, go here. It's always a box at the end, you get another bit more loot. All of that obviously if you add, as I said before, if you add in directives, it gives you more of it. It also lets you tailor what type of drop you have. Some directives give you a better chance of getting high-end or uh, named gear, uh, and some Named win named weapons. So depending on how you're built and what you actually want to gain out of the system. Any one time, you can tailor what you got to that one. There you go. That is underground, everybody. Let's have a quick look see what we've got. As you saw, we got some knee pads, we got a harness, uh, we got a oh yeah, a performance a yes, scope. It was a nice VX12 scope, and we got an underground cache to add to there is to add to the other ones. We should get another high end item out of it. As I only only went through obviously, uh, only went through as a hard mode, so that's only one item to get out of that. <coughs> I'm currently saving caches until 1.6 hits. Uh, some more alpha bridge stuff I received there. Once uh, once 1.6 hits, uh, I shall be opening all the caches and see what I get. Now everything transfers across. Let's go back to the base of operations and I've caught the video. So there you go, everybody. That is underground in its basic form. Um, I really enjoyed it. Um, unfortunately, with PTS 4.6 coming up. Um, survival mode hitting after underground um, things got really distracting survival is fantastic but it's a huge time sink every run being between 45 minutes hour and a half just for one run underground as you can see is a much quicker item every time you go in it's pretty much different which means that you get a different experience every time, much like you do with survival, but in a different way. Um, they're set missions in, in um, underground. Survival is much more open-ended how you get a mission done, whereas you're totally directed at how you do things with underground. Ah, there we are. I shall see you guys soon. And uh, thanks for all the likes, all the nice comments I've been having. That's brilliant. Remember, if you like the content, and I will be bringing you more on a regular basis, uh, throw me a like, share with your friends, and uh, build up a nice subscription. And speak to you later. Good night.